Welcome back to another episode of The Goat Debate brought to you by Goat Debate Media. I am your host, Abaya Israel, and we got a good show lined up today. Did Michael Jordan ever use steroids, PEDs or whatever? Do players actually fear LeBron or is it more of a respect thing? And which era of basketball is actually the best era? All that and more right after this. Oh, Even though I killed the ghost, it's still room to debate. It's yeah. either Jordan or LeBron who being labeled the great. Go. If you hungry for the smoke, then come and get you a plate. Cause ah. some rock with LBJ and some giving them hate. Hey, come just. tune into the show, cause we about to get into it. Jordan is the goat. But now it's time to prove it. Let's just jump right into this. Now all of a sudden, Michael Jordan on steroids. Or drugs, or whatever it was. I mean, I think it was either No Chill Gill or Gill's Arena who uh, made the statement, uh, Coach J.O., that Michael Jordan is now allegedly or possibly or could have used a drug or a steroid. But this this is only coming out due to the fact that the information about LeBron James is being circulated. Now, if it had this come out, you know, previously, then we could say, okay, cool, cool, cool. I mean, because my thing is this. Is it, impo- is it impossible? No, it's, it's not. We know how sports are. Anybody could be using it. But let's be honest. Is it just being said now because this is talked about? Or is it something you really, truly believe? And I'm thinking, even if you, let's say, matter of fact, let's say he really believed it. Why now? Why now, Coach Dayo? Is it just the LeBron James loyal fan base? They're going to come to his res- to his rescue no matter what. That's what I'm seeing. What about you? Oh, I agree. You know, um, Gilbert Arenas has been a LeBron James supporter over the years and nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with supporting LeBron James. But I do believe that if this P, if these PED allegations found to be true, the narrative has to change. Everybody has to go back on what they've said over the years. I don't think people are ready for that. Gilbert Arenas, he was a special guest on Ticket TV last night during the Denver Nuggets and I meant during the Warriors Lakers game. And he was asked the question, Chill Sonny, an ESPN employee, still yeah. currently employed by ESPN, is publicly stating that him and LeBron James has the same drug guy. Ticket TV asked Gilbert this, why isn't any fire under Chill Sonny? Why isn't? And he also asked, why isn't? any other major outlets or major um, sports network covering this or talking about this? That's the question that was posed to Gil. And his answer Mm -hmm. was, you know, as usual, everybody did. Or it was going on back then or whatever, you know, to try to take pressure off or implying that LeBron James wasn't the only one. Okay? That's the way they sounded. And that's not right. That's not right at all. I don't like that, right? If Because he admitted. He admitted that some of his teammates used steroids. That's the word that he used, right? Right, right. LeBron James isn't necessarily being um, uh, investigated on using a steroid, but why would Gilbert say these things if they're not true? Why? I mean, I was always taught where there's smoke, there's fight. And it's, and it's a lot of smoke going on right now. It's a lot of smoke. It's a lot of smoke. It is. It's a lot of smoke. Coach Scott, I seen you smirking over there when I was talking to Coach Let's, I seen the smirk come out, man. Listen, (laughs) what Gilbert said about what Gilbert Arena said about Michael Jordan could possibly be true. But here's the thing. We don't have any investigation, evidence, allegations, clues, hints, none of that when it comes down to Michael Jordan. But we do have that when it comes down to LeBron, whether it's true or not true. There have been allegations and we know for a fact someone close in your circle, they involve themselves in that situation to get you into this situation today. So even if he's innocent, you know, and hopefully he is. But it, are, are, are LeBron fans bringing this point out now because they feel like everyone's attacking LeBron versus looking into the information of this investigation? I mean, I, I don't. I personally, I don't think it was. It was. It's LeBron fans that are bringing this type of thing. I, I think that Gilbert Arenas made a, a clear cut statement. I think that mm-hmm. when you when you look at what he said in the in the in the totality of how he communicated what he said, 
I mean, you, 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 you gotta be, you gotta be fair. You know, you gotta be fair with the information, right? You're looking at one of the greatest of all time, 15 year career, nine seasons. This man played 82 games plus the playoffs nine times. Then you look at another season where he played 81 games, another season where he played 80 games, another season where he played 78 games. It wasn't too many seasons where Michael Jordan literally did not play at 80 plus games. I'm talking playoffs included where where he just didn't play a majority of the games. And we know how 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 just the game itself can wear on you. Then he made another great point in those in that era. You had one test versus this era. You got six. That's a that's a big difference. Then you look <clears> at <throat> self-admittedly, Michael Jordan said he played with cokeheads, but no one was brought up on any charges. No one was kicked out of the league. No, th- these were druggies that he played with, but no one was kicked off the team. Those are things that kind of pique your curiosity. But again, as it pertains to the career of Michael Jordan, I would never make those type of allegations because I'm going to be fair. Just like I would never make those allegations about LeBron James, and I hope it's not true. I'm, I'm definitely hoping it's not true as it pertains to the career of Michael Jordan. He's one of the greats. He's one of the people who have shaped the game to be what it is. Everybody wanted to be like Mike. The Gatorade commercial made it emphatically clear. So with that being said, no, I I don't want to see one of our greats go down in a scandal where it just tarnishes his career, but it also tarnishes the game. So, you know, I hope it's not true. But again, when you look at things holistically, you know, you you can look at anything and and make it be what you want it to be. But again, I I hope it's not true Um, as a fan of Mike and as a fan of LeBron. I I hope, you know, it's just conjecture and hearsay. Well, so here that's the that's now that's the part that's not true because people were kicked out of the NBA for drug use. And and, and that and, and I and if I'm not mistaken, also off the Bulls team, and I know Gilbert Arena stated that, like that there were individuals, but but let's hypothetically say zero. Let's go with that, right? Let's go with it, Coach well, If we say zero, zero no, 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 I'm saying hypothetically. If we say zero okay, okay. and hypothetically go with that, right? When you look at the Michael Jordan 15 year career, although he played 82 games, and that could be pointed out. Man, 82 games. But you know, are there players in the NBA today that play 82 games and they're not using PEDs? Yes, you can play 82 games. That's not as long as you got the driving and will to play, that's there. But what we're talking about, Coach JO, and correct me if I'm wrong, LeBron James' career seems to be very parallel. And at times and later, they seem to be better than the past. They seem to go up. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, we saw the natural decline. If there was something there, because even Michael Jordan played 82 games for the Wizards, but he played with them, played it on a bum knee. And uh, it was Kwame Brown who was actually, because he was teammates with Jordan, he was talking about this. And he was like, well, what y'all don't realize is that Jordan, yes, he played all 82 games, but Jordan had come to practice, get a couple shots, he's done with practice. He was saying he's saving himself for the game, right? Or they 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 uh, uh, watched his minutes as well because he was an older player and we saw the natural decline. We're not seeing that with LeBron. This is where the question is coming from. Why is there a a parallel? And then it seems to be like you're doing better today than you did in the past in your prime. That a- along with the allegations. That along with the investigations. That along with the the the, the accusations or or the the admissions of hey yeah I had to use a little, a little PED or whatever it was by your by people who are close to you in your circle. See, I think people keep looking at, oh, it's just an allegation. But there are so many different things that go with this that's making it look like that. It's just not one thing. Coach Jo, tell us. Like, I mean, f- f- fill me in. I could be wrong here. I could be wrong. Oh, in, in regards to what, what ask, ask the question again. So when we're looking at LeBron James's career, does it seem like he's on a natural decline? Or is it seem like he's getting his boost. And these are things along, along with that, the allegations and everything else is what's making these allegations look like they could possibly be true. Unless I'm looking at it the wrong way. No, no, you're not looking at it the wrong way. And um, I wouldn't say 
it's not a, a natural decline, right? You know how um, Max Kellerman used to say that uh, Tom Brady was going to fall off a cliff. It's not like that. Like he's going very, very fast that he fall off a cliff. But it, right. it is his decline is very, very, very slow, right? It's not like Slower he's getting others, better. Right? Though. You know, he's not like he's getting better. You can see certain numbers, and I just think that the arrow that he's playing in right now uh, benefits – you know, his stats or whatever. So his stats are inflated to make it seem like he's still the same player from 2015 or 2016 because he averaged That's points. Or probably a good point. But no, he he's not. The thing to me, though, was very, very disingenuous with uh, Gilbert stated is you brought it up, coach. You said the one drug testing, right, back in the 80s. The thing is, they wasn't testing for uh, PEDs at that time. There was, like you stated, there was a drug problem. There was a cocaine problem. There was a heroin problem, all right? There was an article written in 1983 by this guy uh, during the, I mean, of the New York Times, Sam uh, Gottiper. That, uh, the title of that article was um, NBA Will Ban Drug Users. And it talked about the, the heroin use, the hair, I mean, the cocaine use, and also the heroin and cocaine distribution. That was the issue at that time, all right? Then anybody that did it, anybody that was caught, would have a lifetime ban, all right? You could appeal that, but you would have a lifetime ban from the NBA. That was the drug problem at that time, not PEDs, right? So to me, when Gilbert states there was a drug problem, to me, he's implying as if there was a known PED problem during the 80s. And that hasn't been proven to be true. Not saying that PEDs didn't exist, but where's the evidence to even suggest that they existed? Like there is now. We have George Carr, a, a, a coach who coached in the NBA for years, stated in his book, Furious George, that the NBA has a PED problem. He stated these things. Okay? Now that's huge. Now, I, I would agree. I would agree with that. Um, but when when we look at Michael Jordan's career in his last season at 39 years old, he averaged 37 minutes per game for the season. Now, if we look at his very first year, he averaged 38 minutes per game, 38.4 actually. So, I mean. We, we talk about the drop off and we talk about the decline and we talk about, you know, all of these different things. But we we kind of we kind of we kind of are like kind of looking at apples to apples here. It's 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 not a it's not a 38 minute to 30 minute. It's 38 minutes to 37 minutes. Like, could it be could it be that Michael Jordan is just a competitor? Could it could that be it that he wants to compete that he wants to play? I, I would I would hope so. I would hope so. I would definitely hope so. I, I would. I, I, again, the, the allegations as such to to take a person's career and and to say that it's it's your greatness is now being scrutinized and put in the same category as pets. You 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 you. Mm -hmm. I, as a as a former athlete, I would never. I would never do that to another athlete, especially an athlete that is a Hall of Famer that has accomplished what Michael Jordan has accomplished. That that means so much to the game of basketball. I would never do that. But we got to be fair. We got to. I'm, I'm saying let's be fair when we say, hey, LeBron James is 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 ultimately getting better. His skill set is refined since it's been in the league. The kid can dribble. The kid can shoot. The kid can pass. The kid can do other things. Michael Jordan was a dominant scorer. We know his defensive game changed based on the fact that his age kind of helped him do what he did early in his career. But as he got older, we see the decline in his defensive side of the ball. But from an offensive standpoint, we know Michael as the most dominant scorer in the game, so the are game you saying a, are you saying his offensive game never declined? What I'm saying is, in his decline, he had 37 minutes average for 82 games, and it really, it, it really just it, it didn't take a real hit. It didn't take a hit. 
So here's yeah, here's his, the part his, though. His 39 year career is someone else's today. That's someone else's. Uh, but here's what you're leaving out. Here's the career. part. When you're saying being fair, because I mean, I mean, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep it fair. Let's keep it fair. So when you're looking at what's called what we call the totality of all the circumstances, everything, right? The totality of the situation. Again, a teammate of Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's, Kwame Brown, literally stated he did not practice. All right? He probably shoot some jumpers here and there, but he did not practice. He only showed up for the games. Well, let me rephrase that. He only played in the games. He did not practice as all the other players practiced because he was older. So with those minutes, we have to keep that in mind. Also, here's what I just don't get. And Coach Jim, I'm going to pass it to you. Here's what I don't get. So often, people are acting like this is just being made up. or alle- Like it's only allegations. We, How many times must we say there's a whole... Inv- there was an investigation by a federal organization called FBI. Mm. <laughs> it was a federal organization that cleared this man. It was. It was. That's why but, no one can but, say... But, but, no, hold, on, hold, on, to to hold on, hold on, hold on, Coach Scott. Mute your mic. Hold Go on, ahead. hold on, hold Go on. Go ahead. Let me Go finish. Ahead. I'm going to pass it over. I'm going to pass it back to you. What I'm saying is this. You are absolutely right. They cleared him. So nobody can say facts. He was on it or whatever. He was cleared. But when it comes down to it, you can't act like it's just being made up out of, out of thin blue air. You can't act like those three close associates were not named. And, and seeing that they use them. We can't act like we're not seeing something that we've never seen that could possibly be uh, from that. We can't act like these allegations also have not been here since 2009. Like, it didn't just show up. It resurfaced with Kevin Garnett talking about it a couple times, several times, a few times. But it didn't just show up. We're in 2024. This has been happening since 2009, Coach J.O. Why are we acting like, and I'm going to bring it back to Coach Scott, why are we acting like this is like just simple allegations and we can't understand why people are saying it? That, that's the issue that many have. Like, why is this not being discussed? Even as a story, not to accuse, I mean, not to accuse or allege LeBron James did anything, but you're talking about the most popular athlete definitely in the NBA, right? The most famous athlete definitely in the NBA and probably over the, the last 10, 15 years in the world. You can say that. Active athlete like, at least. Why, why is this not even being a topic of discussion? That's the thing. Why isn't this being talked about? Your wife, your best friend, your business partner, all right, and a, and a trainer of yours, literally were in FBI paperwork. Literally, their names was in FBI paperwork. How does how, like how do the how is LeBron James not being asked questions about this every day, or at least one, two, or three times? I tell you, that's what you call being fair, right? And, and Coach Scott, I tell you what, I would like to hear, even if it's just that's nonsense. I'm not talking about that. No, that's nonsense. I would like to hear at least a, a denial, Coach Scott. There's absolutely nothing, and just because you know. There's no, no denial that don't necessarily mean he's guilty of it, because as you stated, he's been cleared. We understand that. But understand you are in the public eye. You are on a pedestal. You are a role model. There are kids looking up to you. There are grown men looking up to you. There are women looking up to you, children, whatever, everybody. You are among active athletes. You are the most recognizable face, the most popular, famous guy on the planet at this point. A simple, that's not true. Two seconds would do a lot. It would do a lot because a part of the people's uh, even now, nah, even talk to some LeBron fans as well. Even now, a part of their wondering is now is, well, why isn't he not at least saying I didn't do it? Like, yeah, that is a little, you know, make you wonder a little bit, even though I don't believe it. But it does kind of make you wonder. Coach Scott, is that I mean, is that are we are we way off on this? I mean, if you tell me, you let me know. LeBron fans would at least want him to say I didn't do it. I mean, am I wrong or am I missing something? No, I, I don't. I don't think you're off, or, or or you're wrong for wanting wanting to hear. You know, uh, uh, no, I didn't do it, or no, that accusation is is not you know me, or or or, or something. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think that that that's you know uh, uh, above you know his 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 range. But at the same time, I feel like 
to be pulled into something that you've been exonerated for to communicate about something that you 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 you're clearly trying to distance yourself from. I mean, those type of things mean something. I mean, it, it means something not to say anything to those who want them to say want someone to say something. But at the same time, you know, I was always told, man, dogs don't chase parked cars. Dogs, dogs only move at action and movement. Dogs don't chase parked cars. So LeBron James' silence is his ability to say, hey, look, I'm going to keep playing basketball and I'm going to continue to try to be the greatest I can be until I walk away from the game. And then I can say whatever then. But while I'm still playing this game, while I'm still increasing the body of work that I'm trying to put in, Hey, it, it's it's not for me to say. I've been exonerated of all charges. I'm gonna keep playing basketball. Is that right? Is that what I want? No. But but who am I? I'm I'm a fan. I'm I'm a fan just like like several other fans. You know that are looking at what what is he gonna respond to? How is he gonna respond? Well, his response is going out, dropping twenty seven, seven and seven every night. That might be his response. Well, coach, I say this. There's a bunch of dogs chasing this park car. <laughs> and as long as that car stay parked, they go keep chasing. The way this 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 one goes away is to drive that car. <laughs> Let's get ready to go to the next segment. All right. Which era of basketball is the best era? All right. Which era of basketball? Coach, for, let me ask both you guys before we even get into why you think you, which era is better. Let me just ask you which one you think. Coach Scott, which era is the best era of basketball? No uh, details, just why. Just, I'm, I'm sorry, just which one? Uh, definitely be, between 95 and 2013, that transitional era of basketball, for sure. Okay. Oh, what about you, Coach J.O.? That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good era. I'm not gonna, yeah. I, I would agree. And it's, I, I'm more biased because that's the era that I grew up in, you know, from about 90, 96 to about 2009. You know, that that era right there, um, that's the one that really introduced me to the game. That's the one that I was able to really watch, watch closely. Okay. So All right. All right. that's I, the I, era no, that no. I'm going with. No, yeah, that's just it. That's one point you're going with that, Coach. <laughs> All right. Um, so that nineties, so y'all on the on the Jordan tail end is the era that y'all go. Okay. All right, all right. Well, I'll tell you my era. I think I think it started from the eighties up into like I know eras are like 10 years we talked about, right? About 10 years. But with me, I think it goes a little pat. I like the I like the whole 90s, but I like them them early 2000 to 2010 as well. Man, that was if I was to say any era was better than the 90s, I would have to go with that era from 2000 to 2010, you know, with Kobe and Shaq and the Celtics and you know, back when the Lakers and Celtics rivalry kind of rekindled a little bit. I would have to go with that yeah, era. Man. But I'm a, yeah, that was a that was a great era. I'm gonna start with you, Coach Scott. Um, why do you say that era is the best era of basketball to you? Um, it, it, it's just it just has so so much talent, so much talent. I mean, you you I mean, you cannot throw away the 80s and the 90s. Uh, I mean, people people make this argument and they oh, yeah, we're gonna throw away the 80s and the 90s. Ah, we done with the 90s. That's what they say. <laughs> by the way, by the way, he will. He will be on the show. Uh, we haven't awesome. set the date, but sometime next week. So we can have a discussion with him. So that is, that's going to be a good one. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. But I'm sorry, absolutely. Coach Scott, go ahead. No, 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 absolutely. We, we, we were excited about it, excited about it. But no, you, you definitely can't throw that error away, man. I mean, all of our greats, all of our greats who we, you know, our, our era of when we were kids, you know, that was what basketball was. That's, you know, watching that and going outside and, and playing on the crate. I'm dating myself. I played on the crate. You know, we used to cut the bottom of the crate and hanging on the pole. Uh, you know, going out and, and, and pretending like you were Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan and Magic. That that was, you know, that that was the basketball era that gave us what we know as the greats. But, I mean, that transitional phase, that's where basketball for me, you know, you had to learn how to shoot. You had to learn how to dribble. You had to learn how to right. penetrate and kick, right? So, so you you took a little bit of magic. You took a little bit of 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 Mike. You took a little bit of Charles. You took a little bit of these these greats, 
and and kind of refined it between that era. And that's where you get AI, you get your Kobe's, yeah. you get your you get your Steve, Steve Francis and, and Tracy McGrady's and, yeah, and LeBron's yeah. and your D-Ways and your Carmelo's. That's where them guys got it from. That's that's when that era was really motivated and, and driven by what they saw in the 90s, man. So to get rid of the 90s is like, oh, I wouldn't say that, but that's just me. Um, but no, man, when I say, you know, when you look at basketball, you know, you're looking at 22 percent of, 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 of outside shooting. You increased to 39 percent of three point shooting in that 95 to 2013 era mid range. It actually dropped from 31 percent to 13 percent just based on people being able to pick up an outside jumper. So, you know, the mid range game went a little bit deeper, got behind the arc, and now players started to increase the productivity of the game. That's when we start seeing a little bit more of the points increase and things of that nature. So that part of the game to me was was a little bit more exciting. And we saw a lot of more flash and dash. We we see the Tracy McGrady's, the Vince Carter's, the Steve Francis. That's true. You know, yeah. they, they took they took Duncan to another level. They they actually did. They actually did. Although I still think Michael Jordan was like the gr- most graceful dunker ever. And it was pretty moves, but you know, the Vince Carters and you know, the Tracy McGrady's, they, they did come and do some extra. Matter of fact, uh, what was his name? Aaron uh, uh, Gordon, that dunk contest, man. I oh. think that probably was the greatest dunk contest ever. All right. I ain't gonna be biased. Cause it wasn't in the nineties. That was had to be the greatest ever. But what, what, what I like to think about coach J.O. When it comes to the, to the nineties, the eighties and the nineties, because remember, the NBA was just that. It was the NBA. And then Magic came. Remember, it came. It was, oh, it's the NBA. Then Jordan came. And then it was the freaking NBA. It was global at this point. And we forget that Jordan didn't make a lot of money. Not in, in comparison, Jordan wasn't making a lot of money. He started getting paid later in his career. 92, I mean, anytime you make over a million dollars, it's a lot of money. You know what I mean? But you get what I'm saying. When right. compared to, to today's contracts, Jordan did not make a lot of money. And I believe that uh, the younger players are forgetting it was the 80s that turned into the 90s, that turned into the 2010s, that allowed you to get that five-year, $110 $10 million contract. Because they weren't getting that money back then. And had the game right. not going global, uh, Coach J.O., then they wouldn't be getting that money today. So instead of, you know kind of knocking the older guys is you should be thankful for older guys, but hey, I get it. You know, kids, kids, it is what it is because they'll tell us why do you think that the era that you chose and um, tell us what the era was again from the year to year and tell us why you chose that era. Why is that the greatest era? Like, really? Like I say, from about 90, I'm going to give a date 98 to 2010, right? From 98 to 2010, you could push it to 11 and 12, right? Um, uh, mainly, like I say, uh, Michael Jordan, I caught the tail end of his career. I was able to watch some of those games live. Contrary to proper belief, I was never a Michael Jordan fan ever. Okay. Never, ever. I literally, the games I watched him play, I literally rooted against him every time I wanted him to lose. He was just too good. Okay. <laughs> Once he left Kobe Bean Bryant, he became my favorite player. He's still today, my favorite player ever. That era, I am a defensive guy, right? I am a defensive guy, and I believe that defensive rebounding win championships, all right? I will die on that hill. I won't change on that, all right? Contrary to popular belief, too. I know we want to think that the 80s had the best defense or the 90s had the best defense, but the toughest defenses was in those early 2000s. And I got a couple of numbers for you, okay? No season. After the 1980s, not one, not one had a lower field goal percentage than the 1998, 99, 03, 04, the 02, 03, the 2000, 2001, and the 01-02 seasons. That was the lowest field goal percentage in, in NBA history past the 1980s, right? You had 43.7%, 43.9%. 44.2%, 44.3%, 44.5%. That's what teams were shooting during this time. Guys were really playing defense, okay? They were really playing some defense. And like you said earlier too, Coach Scott, and it also was a combination of everything. 
You still right. had your great point guards and your Steve Nash's, your Tony Parker's, your Jason Kidd's, your Gary Payne's. You still had your great big man, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, your Shaq. You still had your mid-ranges and Tracy McGrady's and Kobe Bryant's and the Paul Pierce's. And then you had your LeBron James's coming along. Your Kevin Durant's coming along with the shooting. Your Steph Curry's coming along with the shooting in the late 2000s, uh, early 2010s. It was just a combination of everything. You wasn't really lopsided in anything, and you still had that level of competitiveness and defense uh, that was still present. Mm. Okay. I see what we're doing here. So both of y'all done with the 90s, huh? <laughs> yeah, they done with the 90s, man. What's going on? <laughs> uh, no, nah, hey, listen. I can't – listen, I'm a 90s guy, but I know I can't argue with that because the, that era, right after the 90s, like I said, that 2000 era, man, that's – up in the 2010, 2011-ish, man, that was that was some basketball being played, man. Coach Scott, those were, I would say, those were some of my most memorable finals because with the Bulls, I was like, the Bulls going to win. You know, I knew the, they had Jordan. To me, I just knew if it came down to it, it it's like when I used to play basketball, and I understood when Jordan was talking about this. Um, when you play ball, and I ain't, I ain't tooting my own, own horn, but, but beep, beep, you know, when you good and you, you were able to play, you know, on the level that I was playing, at least I'm talking about, it's just, it feels like I can miss 10 shots in a row, but I know I can turn on when I'm ready to. It's something that clicks in your mind. It's like, all right, I'm ready. You know, and something's off about your game. You just can't hit a shot. But when it comes down to it, just like, you know what? Give me the ball. I'm going to take it. And that was Jordan. And he lived that. And if you were rooting for his team, like J.O. said, just, just too good. You knew at some point, switch was going to come on. And guess what? Bulls were going to win. But in that 2000s, I was on the edge of my seat a lot of them games, right? Especially like with the uh, the 04 Pistons, you know, the Lakers. I was like, man, I was going for the Lakers. I was mad. I was, I was big mad. I was big mad. And I, I was on the edge of my seat. Though. I can understand, like, Lakers, why are you losing? But those are some of the most memorable uh, finals that I can remember. What about you, Coach Scott? Oh, no, absolutely. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And then, you know, again, Coach J.O. made a great point from a from a defensive standpoint. I think that the changing of the guard happened. Uh, Kobe Bryant, I was watching some uh, just some film on him. And, and one of the things that Kobe Bryant said, uh, you know, at the All-Star break, he said, don't change the All-Star game. We got to keep it competitive because if we change this, this is going to change the game. And as we see, we got all of these skill competitions now. Yeah. We got all of these random events and stuff like that now. And now the game has just changed so much that, yeah. you know, I don't, we, you know, the last, you know, All-Star game, I, I, I didn't watch it at all. You know, and, and it's sad because because it was it was it was for it was foresight that Kobe Bryant had. Like, hey man, the competitive the, the the competitiveness of the game and how you're allowing us to get at each other. This is our chance to to be kids again. You got all of the great kids playing on one side of the court versus the other side, and let us just do our thing. And that was really for me, like you said, it was really the culmination of. Skill right. versus will versus right. dominance versus yeah. who could do what. And, and everybody was trying to show everybody up for that one weekend. And yep. that was basketball. And when and when you came off that all-star break, man, basketball took off. I mean, right. the season itself took off. And it, it was it was just it was just great back then, man. It, it, it was it yeah. was a, it was something to see. It was like pickup all over again. You know, you're picking up. Oh, man. Uh, hey, I got you. You're picking the best players first. Right. And you know those were the best games, man. And, you know, speaking of speaking of Kobe Bean Bryant, let's go to the next segment. Um, Coach J.O. Talking about Kobe. <laughs> and as Coach Scott just said, man, listen, he had foresight. Kobe had a lot. And I'm going to be honest with y'all now. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. I used to hate Kobe Guts. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I used to hate Kobe. I was like, you know what? He's arrogant. But you know what? I started to see with Kobe who he was as a player. And then even more when I start, when even Kobe admitted, hey, I learned to trust my teammates. He was already an awesome player. 
But when he said, I learned to trust my teammates, boom, it's just like it blew up. And I became the biggest Kobe Bryant fan. Like this guy don't add, he don't, he don't just have talent or skill. Uh, 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 coach J.O. The man had like, as coach Scott said, foresight. The man was, a he, this was a jewel, a diamond in the game, you know? So may he rest in peace, but this was a diamond in the game. Coach J.O. Why do major media, and I'm going to keep it 100. They hate on Kobe Bryant. I have seen top 10 lists. Kobe barely in the top 10. Kobe's not a top five player. A number two, Jordan Kobe. I know some going to say Jordan LeBron, but it should be Jordan Kobe. Or some can say Jordan LeBron. But why? it should always be, I think, one of those two right there. Why do we see lists? Kobe Bryant, number nine. 10, 7. What the heck are you talking about? Coach Ayo, I might just be tripping right now. Let me know. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe all the other careers are so great and they just outdid Kobe and Kobe is falling down the list. I don't know how, but maybe he just fell down the list. I Actually, you know what? Before you say that, I don't know how Kobe can fall down the list behind players that had already stopped playing and he was already Shit. still playing. That's the part I don't get. How does that happen? But it's on you, Coach Ayo. You got it. I'm trying to figure this one out. Listen, we, we, we are in an era now where fans and the media members, they don't care about defense. It's just simple as that. They forget that defense is 50% of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Brian Scalabrini, he was a former Celtic. They actually call him the white mamba, right? He stated that he can't take players seriously because the best players in the NBA do not take defense serious. Right. He stated that. Okay, but we know Kobe Bean Bryant did that. He took pride in both ends of the court. Kobe Bryant is the last player to average 30 points per game while making all defense first team. And he did that three times. Three times. Okay. Now, let me let me let me give you this career right here and tell me what y'all think about this hypothetical person, right? Okay. This player. A three-time champ. Eight-time All-Star, All-Star Game MVP, eight-time All-NBA, four first team, two second team, two third team, six-time All-Defense, all right, four-time first team, two-time second team, the dunk contest champ, and one scoring title. If I gave y'all that career, what would you all tell me about that? That's a Hall of Fame Hall of Fame player? Yeah, easy, easy. That's literally what Kobe accomplished in the number eight. When he wore the number eight. That's what he accomplished wearing number eight. 16,866 points. That's more than Bill Russell, James Worthy, Kyrie Irving, Clay Thompson, and Jimmy Butler. He did that in the number eight alone. Just the number eight. Let's just be real. This man had two Hall of Fame careers. Two. That was the NBA back in 2002-2003 NBA.com had a GM's poll. They do it every year. It started in 2002. Uh-huh. From 2002 to 2011, 2012 season, the question was asked, who would you like or who would you want most in the NBA to take the last shot? You know who won that? Who the GMs voted? Number one, every year, Kobe Bean Bryant. Every year. So you you telling me the GMs believe that this man was the most Clutch player from 2002 to 2012. And we just forget about him. We got to stop this. Not on my watch. Not on Coach J.O. watch. We gotta I'm stop with this. you. I'm with you, Coach. I remember the, the Lakers. Coach Scott were playing the Suns. And this was during the time I ain't like Kobe. And so I wanted Kobe to lose. Like, much like J.O. wanted Jordan to lose. I wanted Kobe to lose. And, but as soon as they inbound the ball to Kobe, I just walked away from the TV. You know why? Because I know that buzzer, that buzzer shot's going in. And guess what it did? Exactly what we all thought it was going to do. Right through the hole. Coach, <laughs> Coach Scott, do you believe, and if you do, then why does mainstream media, the big time outlets, why do they hate on Kobe Bryant the way they do? Why are they? It's like they're disrespecting his career, his legacy. What are your thoughts on it? They don't like competitive greatness. Mm. I'm going to say that again. They don't like competitive greatness. Listen, this kid came into the game in a time where 
if you didn't have the initials MJ, it was it was it was it was tough sledding. It was tough sledding. True. And going back, and and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm I'm guilty of it too. I, I just I, I didn't I didn't like the young guy. I didn't I didn't like Kobe. I didn't like him. Took took Brandy to the prom. How dare you take Brandy to the prom? I want to take Brandy to the prom. How dare you? What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> right? But uh man, just just watching film on on Kobe and listening to him throughout his career and what other players had to say about him as yeah. as they were his teammates and guys who competed against him, right? His competitive greatness, man was so on the level of Michael Jordan. They said that they didn't know at times if he was really acting like Mike or was he really trying to be Mike? Because the way he approached practice, the way he approached games, the way he approached the weight room, the way he approached his teammates, the way he approached the coaches, he took a competitive greatness in every single thing he did. The guy went to the rucker and almost got into it with with with, with one of the with one of the, the the biggest you know guys in the in the city, not knowing who the guy was. But Kobe just didn't care because he took his craft so seriously that he didn't. It, it didn't matter. And those things to me. You you just can't overlook that. You can't overlook that type of competitive greatness. Now, here's here's the conundrum. Here's here's the conundrum. Kobe being outside of the top three is crazy to me. That's just me. But here's here's what I'm saying. And and, and here's here's how you here's how I'm looking at it. Kobe and Mike were just so much of the same player. You got to pick one. Right. You got to pick one of who's going to be the greatest. Right. And in that, most people are going to default to Mike. But also, you, you, you can't just automatically move LeBron out of the way. But at the same time, the, the, the guy's still playing. He's still competing. So I personally, that's why he's my 1B. But Kobe's definitely my 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 if you have to have a two, he's my two three guy, no doubt, because of his competitive greatness. I used to think he was a ball hog, and then he came out and made a, a, a comment in a in an interview. And 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 it was so riveting. And like you said, it was so right. foreshadowing of who he was as a person. He mm-hmm. said, I didn't trust them because they didn't put the work I put in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I remember that. They statement. couldn't get that shot because I remember they that didn't statement. work I put in. Well, they have man, to. That, I mean, you got to oh, You got to You got to have that. If you don't trust your teammates. Oh. And that's why I said earlier, he learned to trust his teammates. That's when I really started becoming a Kobe fan. Kobe but fan. you know yeah. what? I think Jordan's the GOAT. But guess what? If somebody came to me and said, I think Kobe the GOAT over Jordan. That'd be an argument I wouldn't waste my time with. You know why? Because I can see why you would say that. I can understand that. I can understand that point of view. Kobe is ultimately, I think, is 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 Jordan, but I wouldn't argue too hard to say, nah, it's not Kobe. Because Kobe has a resume, the skill, the work ethic, and the respect of all of his peers. His peers talk about him completely yeah, different than what you're gonna see in the media. If you watch something on, in the media and then talk to his peers, it's like, whoa, did I just talk to two different sources, two different people? Yeah, you did. They talk about him in a cl- completely different way. But let's go to the next segment. All right. All right. Who did I start with last time? I, Coach Scott, I'm going to start with you. What's going on with Ryan Clark and Tiki Barbara, man? They're like, what, where is the beef coming from? And from what I've been seeing, this has kind of been a little lasting beef. It got a little history to it from my understanding. What's going on with these guys? How how do you make it to the league? How do you make it to this level? How do you get to the point where your life is is what it is? When people still down bottom struggling, and y'all up here arguing over some of the most pettiest stuff. I mean, it, it maybe it's not petty, but to me, outside looking in, it is. What about you, Coach Scott? What, what's your thoughts on it? Locker room locker room gripes die hard. Locker room gripes die hard. 
Let me tell you, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As a rookie, everybody remembers two seasons emphatically. They remember two seasons emphatically. Their rookie season and their last season of playing sports. Those two seasons are the most important to an athlete because it shapes who you are coming in and it and it and it and it and it pushes your legacy of who you were in the game when you leave it. And Tiki Barber, he needs to stop. I really feel like he tried to gaslight Ryan Clark on the things he was saying because for an athlete to remember how they were treated in their rookie season, it means something. It means right. something. It was some guys, some some grown men that took me under their wing, and I'll never forget them for that because they helped me become a man as I grew in the game. There's some guys that 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 shunned me because you know we were competing for a job, and I'll never forget it because I felt like. I would never treat another person like that because, hey, man, it's just happenstance. We're all competing. We're all here for one reason. So I think for Tiki Barber to try and gaslight Ryan Clark on how he felt and how he was treated by Tiki Barber, I feel that that was wrong. Now, should they still be arguing as grown men and adults as, you know, as 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 their careers have been ended and, and, and molded to what they are? Eh. But those locker room gripes die hard. And I'm telling you, Tiki Barber should man up off, off the off the record, have a conversation with Ryan Clark and, and clear the air. That's my coach J.O. I, I see you a, shaking your head. I got a What's question for now? you. Hold on, I got a question for you. Um that time we played the Lauderdale Lakes, and you returned the kickoff for a touchdown, right? And then boom, holding. Brought it all the way back. Kicked it off. You returned it again. Another 100 yards again. Flag again. Brought it all the way back. Coach Jacobs, man, returned the ball all the way down. I think it was a two-yard line last time. Had we had a locker room, and, and it was Ron White. I remember. I called his name out of <laughs> Had we had a locker room, that would have been some beef in that locker room that day. Would it not? <laughs> hey, that's that's a memory That's a memory for me I always carry. Like, I've never seen nobody return the ball three times in a row. It was crazy to me. But anyway... I know it'd have been some beef in the locker room, but we had to get straight on the bus and go home. <laughs> Coach J.O., what's going on with Ryan Clark and Tiki Barber? Do you think this is is this good for the sport? I mean, is this I mean, I, I guess sports is becoming entertainment. So in that sense, I guess, yeah, but is it good for the sport? Like to see this? That was a great point. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's that, that's what Tiki is saying. Tiki is like, Ryan, what are you trying to get some clicks off of me or what? Come on, coach. We got, we, got, we got to understand this. There's always three sides to a story. His side of the story, his side of the story, and the truth. Are we going to listen to Tiki's side of the story? Tiki stated he didn't even really know Ryan Clark as a Ricky. He didn't know him. Coach, you've been in them locker rooms. Let's just be real. Tiki was a big dog in the locker room. I'm not saying that the big dogs in the locker room don't ingratiate themselves with rookies, but Tiki was like, dude, I don't even know you. Like, why are you making up these stories? Everything that uh, Tiki is saying is Ryan's making this up. For what? For what? Tiki stated that, hey, I guess Ryan, he's on ESPN. Now he got the new contract. So his word is law. Come on, Ryan. Dude, to me, he's being sensitive, if you ask me. He's being very sensitive. Tiki, you think yeah, Ryan yeah, Clark yeah, being I'm, sensitive? I'm going to use that word sensitive. I'm going to use it, right? Tiki is a fan now, right? He has the right to say what he wants to about Saquon Barkley uh, going to the uh, Philly. He looked at that as treason. Those are rivals. He made the comment that if Saquon leave, you're dead to us. And he said it facetiously. He was really just joking around. And Ryan Clark, come on, come on with his sword out and coming to the rescue. For what? That wasn't Ryan Clark's business. To get into that. And, mm -hmm. and, and Tiki Barber, he said that he loved uh, Saquon. He said he loved Saquon. He was just being a fan. That's how if you if we go back and, and listen to, he was just being a fan. You can go anywhere, Saquon. Go to Houston. Go to Pittsburgh. 
but just don't go to Philly. Don't go to them. Don't go to the team that beats us up. I I, I guess I can follow that, Coach Scott. It's like, you know, I don't know, Kevin Durant going to the Golden State Warriors. (laughs) Why would you go to that team? I mean, would you disagree? Um, I mean, maybe Coach got a point. Maybe maybe Ryan Clark really didn't have any business in that. Well, I think I think that he, well, here's why Ryan Clark did play for, for for New York, right? So so he got just as much right to talk about New York as he, he his his career was solidified two as seasons. a Pittsburgh Steeler, but he played for the Giants too, right? Two seasons, but but at the same time, when you when you when you are one of the best at your position when you're the best at your craft and your home team doesn't want to pay you what do you do what do you do do you You keep the slave mentality and just keep taking whatever they give you you don't commit treason you You don't don't commit commit treason treason. you don't commit treason no you don't do that you don't you don't run away from who you's abusing you that's Stockholm syndrome. That, that's what you that's call it. That's a classic it? case of Stockholm syndrome. Classic that's what case. You call it. That classic case. It's a classic case of Stockholm. I'm gonna stay with the abuser. That's crazy. That's madness. Philly saw the Philly saw the value. Philly saw the value. They paid him with no problem. They paid him with no problem. Hmm. Listen, Tiki Tiki's problem with Ryan Clark is. Ryan, why are you trying to make me look like the bad guy? For what? For what reason do you want me to look like the bad guy? You're making up stories. Ryan talking about Tiki didn't um, take him under his wing when he came into uh, came with the Giants or whatever. And Tiki's like, dude, what are you talking about? I didn't know you. I didn't know you. Come on. It's a lot of people in that locker room, coach. So Tiki just wants to take out his time. And go get Ryan Clark and take him under his wing. All no. of those players, not only the players um, on the regular season roster, but the practice squad. And I, I mean, come on, man. It, it, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that in the least. But here's what I'm saying: in, in, in a locker room, in a locker room environment, you, you, you really, you really, you, you got the guys who are the closest to you, which are your unit guys, your position guys. Offense and defense really live two type of they live in two totally different worlds in the locker Thank room. Thank you. It's really two totally Thank different you. worlds. And 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 if you just so happen to have one of those numbers where you're you got an offensive guy and the offense, you know, your offensive kind of locker mates, you know, you you chop it up with those guys because see them every day, right? But from a standpoint of it was something, and, and, and again, I wasn't there. I'm not, I'm not specifically speaking to Ryan Clark's defense, but what I'm saying is, it had to be something where he was, where he felt he was treated ill, willingly, where he's still communicating about it. That's all I'm saying. And instead of gaslighting this man as, "Hey, this is how I treated him. Hey, I apologize. Hey, if you felt like this," he's gaslighting the man and like, "Man, I don't even, I didn't even know who you was." I wait a minute. This, Coach Ayo, you made the NFL roster. Yeah, that was kind of disrespectful. Coach Ayo, you don't think he should at least apologize to him? You, you think he's just being sensitive, like for real, for real? Apologize for what? I'm just asking. Like, I'm just asking. What I'm saying, like Ryan Clark had nothing to do with that uh, at all. Tiki wasn't even talking to Ryan Clark. He was talking to Saquon. He was talking to Saquon, and I Ryan that. butted in. That wasn't his business at all. Coach Scott, he has a point. I mean, he does have a point. He does have a point. Anyway, you both make two good points. Listen, we have reached the end of the show. All right. Listen, make sure you guys are following us. Subscribe to our YouTube. Hit the like button. Follow us on all social media. Make sure you are here every. Wait, wait, wait. We Did we change our times? We didn't change our times. We're staying ready. We're going to change our times. We are uploading every Monday at noon. Make sure you catch us. And also on Tuesday nights, we're going to start back going live. Call in. You see the number that's been scrolling across the screen. Call in. 
take part in the GOAT debate. Every discussion we have, we're not just debating uh, Jordan, LeBron. We're not just debating. Uh, we, we debate now everything. The best teams, okay? The best cornerbacks, the best quarterbacks. It's the GOAT debate. Every sport, every position. Make sure you, you subscribe, call in, join into the fun, and we will see you guys next time. Welcome to The Goat Debate, the premier online sports debate show where engaging discussions and thrilling debates unfold as we determine who is the greatest of all time in every sport. I am your host, Abaya Israel, joined by my two co-hosts, Coach Scott and Coach J.O. Tune into our YouTube and Facebook channels to catch our reactions and coverage of the biggest games and the latest news. Don't miss out on your chance to participate in the action. Join us every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a The Goat Debate, where you, the viewer, can call in and share your thoughts on who deserves the title of the GOAT. Be sure to mark your calendars. Every Monday, we upload 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, and we go live every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe, call in, and participate. Come and be a part of the conversation.